let's take a quick look at a few of the highlights from the Regency 38 auction that concluded earlier in the year. So let's kick things off with a rarity from the modern catalogue and a coin that you could still discover in your pocket change. The 1992D Close AM Lincoln Penny, inadvertently created when the wrong reverse die was sent to the Denver Mint and used to strike circulation grade coins. I already made a video about these coins and how you can identify them if you want to learn more. This coin was graded by PCGS as AU58 and sold for a somewhat underwhelming $705 at auction. Quite a few early commemorative half dollars were also on offer at the sale, and one of the finest has to be this 1935S Texas coin. Texas does have a rich and very storied history, but the centennial celebrations in 1936 were of particular importance, commemorating both the Battle of the Alamo, the victories of General Sam Houston in the Texas Revolution, and the Texan in Independence of 1836, tied for finest known at a grade of MS68 from PCGS. This gem beauty was sold at auction for the sum of $9,693. Lot 60 was another Lincoln Penny variety that is very high on the list of many a collector interested in the subject. The 1972 double die obverse scent is one of the boldest in the series, with clear doubling visible to the naked eye on virtually all of the obverse elements. A classic case of class 1 rotated hub doubling with a grade from PCGS of MS67 plus red. There are only five coins graded finer at the service. The closing price for this gem variety coin at auction was $10,575. Only a single die pair was used to strike 1,376 seats at Liberty Dollars at the Carson City Mint in 1871, which makes it the lowest mintage regular issue dollar coin from the Carson City Mint. To make things even more challenging for the collector today, most of those coins were absorbed into circulation, leaving only an estimated 150 or so coins surviving to this day. PCGS graded this example example as XF45, placing it about square in the middle of the pack, tied for 61st in the census report in terms of grade. Not too bad. $17,037.50 was the closing price at auction for this rarity. And now a classic overdate variety from the 20th century. In fact, uh, we will encounter a similar coin a little bit later on in the list as well. The 1918 over 7 S Standing Liberty Quarter Dollar, a fairly desirable date in its own right, made even more so by this blatant overdate. There is no mistaking that the 8 was impressed on top of an already existing 7, although escaping a full head desert designation, the strike on this coin is very sharp and justifies the MS63 grade from PCGS. To gain $21,150 at auction. The next coin has it all, beginning with a heady gold rush fever and ending in calamitous shipwreck. For a short period in early 1854, between when the US assay office in California closed to be transformed and reshaped into the US branch mint in San Francisco, there was a shortage of coin in the region. Most of the private issues had by this point been discredited and melted, and as the assay office was closed, it was no longer producing coin. The firm of Kellogg and Company therefore stepped into the void to fill the desperate need for gold coin, with designs that are shockingly similar to the regular federal issues of the day. The current coin was one of 26 Kellogg double eagles recovered from the shipwreck of the SS Central America. Graded by PCGS as AU58+, the coin attained $29,375 at auction. 
The 1848 half cent was one of the last in a series of proof-only issues for this denomination, as minting of circulation strike half cents would again resume in 1849 for the first time in nearly a decade and a half. Even for proof-only issues like these, though, exact mintage figures were not reliably kept by the US Mint for proof coins during this time. However, it is generally accepted that between 15 and 20 coins were struck at best. This original 1848 half cent replete with large berries on the reverse was graded by PCGS as proof 65 red brown and saw a closing price at auction of $36,425. The 1855 O Double Eagle is easily one of the rarest coins in the series. Out of an already meager mintage of only 8,000 coins, there are estimated to be somewhere between only 80 and maybe 130 coins left surviving today. It is outstripped in terms of rarity by only the 1854 O and 1856 O issues. The current example was graded by PCGS as X. XF45 Plus and saw a closing price of $42,300. Though the 1929D Walking Liberty half dollar has a relatively low mintage of 1,001,200 coins, and it would be one of the last half dollars struck until the denomination was again issued in 1933, following a lack of demand during the years of the Great Depression, it is by no stretch of the imagination a rare coin though. What this coin illustrates though is the magnifying effect of being a conditional rarity as one of the top five graded coins in the combined census report, with a given grade of MS67, it will make a proud addition to any competitive registry set, and at a price of $64,625, the bragging rights of owning this coin were hard won by its new owner. After the New Orleans Mint reopened for operations in 1879, following its effective closure at the beginning of the Civil War in 1861, the main focus was producing silver dollars following the directives of the Bland-Allison Act of 1878. Despite this shortage of silver deposits from the region, a small number of gold eagles and double eagles were however also struck, including the only Type 3 double eagle, and in fact the very last double eagle to emanate from the New Orleans Mint. A brilliant coin at a superb grade of AU55 from PCGS that sold at auction for $82,250. Considering that the Buffalo Nickel series was only in production from 1913 to 1938, there are a relatively large number of die varieties listed in the Red Book as standard issues, coins that are pursued by both variety specialists and regular collectors alike. The 1918 over 7D over date nickel is just such a coin. It is unknown how many of the 8.3 million nickels struck in Denver in 1918 were of this description, but the coin was not brought to the attention of the general collecting public until around 1930, so most examples today are well worn as a result, making this almost gem MS64 plus specimen from PCGS all the more appealing still, and underscoring the closing price at auction of $99,875. The 1909-0 oh, Indian Head Half Eagle holds the distinction of not only being the sole issue from the series to have been struck at the New Orleans Mint, but is also, along with the half dollar for that same year, the last coin struck for general circulation from that same facility, before its eventual closure in 1911. The coins here appear to lack the particular doubling on the mint mark that you would so often see on this issue, but the small mint 
percentage of only 34,200 coins in combination with the unusually small surviving population ensures a heated interest from the collecting community. Graded here as MS63 from PTGS, the coin managed to attain $144,562.50 at auction. Let me know which one of these coins stood out to you in the comment section below. Subscribe to WNN and don't forget to activate notifications with the bell icon so you'll know when new videos are released. For the world numismatic news, I am Numisman saying thank you ever so much for watching, stay safe, keep collecting and have a fantastic day.